Cinderella by Jane Werner. Once upon a time, in a far off land, there lived a kindly gentleman. He had a fine home and a lovely little daughter, and he gave her all that money could buy a horse of her own, a funny puppy dog, and many beautiful dresses to wear. But the little girl had no mother. She did wish for a mother and for other children to play with. So her father married a woman with two daughters. Now, with a new mother and sisters, he thought, his little daughter had everything to make her happy. But at last, the kindly gentleman soon died. His fine home fell into disrepair, and his second wife was harsh and cold. She cared only for her own two ugly daughters. To her lovely stepdaughter, she was cruel as cruel could be. Everyone called the stepdaughter Cinderella now, for she had to work hard. She was dressed in rags, and she sat by the cinders to keep herself warm. Her horse grew old, locked up in the barn, and her dog was not allowed in the house. But do you suppose Cinderella was sad? Not a bit. Cinderella made friends with the birds who flew to her window sill each day. Cinderella made friends with the barnyard chickens and geese, and her best friends of all were, guess who? The mice. The musty old house was full of mice. Their homes were in the garret where Cinderella lived. She made little clothes for them and gave them all names. And they thought Cinderella was the sweetest and most beautiful girl in the world. Every morning, her friends, the mice and the birds, woke Cinderella from her dreams. Then it was breakfast time for the household, with Cinderella doing all the work, of course. Out on the back steps, she set a bowl of milk for the stepmother's disagreeable cat, who watched for his chance to catch the mice. The faithful dog had a tasty bone. There was grain for the chickens and ducks and geese, and Cinderella gave some grain to the mice. When they were out of reach of the cat, of course, then back into the house she went. Up the stairway, she carried breakfast trays for her stepmother and her two lazy stepsisters, and down she came with a basket of mending, some clothes to wash, and a long list of jobs to do for the day. Now let me see," her stepmother would say. "You can clean the large carpet in the main hall, and wash the windows upstairs and down, scrub the terrace." Sweep the stairs, and then you may rest. Oh," said Cinderella. "Yes, I will finish all those jobs." And off to work she went. Now, across the town from Cinderella's home was the palace of the king, and in the king's study one day sat the king himself, giving orders to the great grand duke. The prince must marry," said the king to the great grand duke. "It is high time.、Uh, but your Majesty, what can we do?" asked the duke. "First, he must fall in love." "We can arrange that," said the king. "We shall give a great ball this very night and invite every girl in the land." There was a great excitement all through the land. And in Cinderella's home, the stepsisters were delighted when the invitation to the king's ball arrived. "How delightful!" they said to each other. "We are going to a ball at the palace." "And I," said Cinderella, "I am invited to the ball too." "Oh, you!" laughed the stepsisters. <laughs> "Yes, you!" mocked the stepmother. Of course, you may go if you finish your work," she said. "And if you have something suitable to wear," I said. "If Cinderella," and she smiled a very horrid smile. Cinderella worked as hard as she could all through the long day. 
But when it was time to leave for the ball, Cinderella had not a moment to fix herself up or give a thought to address to her to the ball. Why, Cinderella, you are not ready. How can you go to the ball? asked her stepmother when the coach was at the door. No, I am not going, said Cinderella sadly. Not going? Oh, what a shame, the stepmother said with her mocking smile. But there will be other balls. Poor Cinderella. She went to her room and sank sadly down with her head in her hands. But a twittering sound soon made her turn around. Her little friends had not forgotten her. They had been scampering and flying about and as busy as could be, fixing a party dress for her to wear. Oh, what a lovely dress, she cried. I can't thank you enough. She told all the birds and the mice. She looked out the window. The coach was still there, so she started to dress for the ball. Wait, cried Cinderella to the coachman. I am coming too. She ran down the long stairway just as the stepmother was giving her daughters some last commands. They turned around and stared. My beads, cried one stepsister. And my ribbon! cried the other, snatching off Cinderella's stash. And those bows, you thief! Those are mine, shrieked the stepmother. So they pulled and they ripped and they tore at the dress until Cinderella was in rags once more. And they flounced off to the ball. Poor Cinderella. She ran to the garden behind the house. And there Cinderella sank down on a low stone bench and wept as if her heart would break. But soon she felt someone beside her. She looked up, and through her tears she saw a sweet-faced woman. Oh, said Cinderella. Good evening. Who are you? I am your fairy godmother, said the little woman. And from the thin air she pulled a magic wand. Now, dry your tears. You can't go to the ball looking like that. Let's see now. The first thing you will need is a pumpkin, said the fairy godmother. A Cinderella did not understand, but she brought the pumpkin. And now, for the magic words, the fairy godmother began. Selagadoo, Minchikabula, Bibbity, Poppity, Bibbity. Poppity, boo. Slowly up reared the pumpkin on its pumpkin vine, and it turned into a very handsome magic coach. What we need next is some fine, big mice, said the fairy godmother. Cinderella brought her friends, the mice, and at the touch of the wand, they turned into prancing horses. Then Cinderella's old horse, became a very fine coachman, and Bruno the dog turned into a footman at the touch of a magic wand, and a bippity poppity boo There, said the fairy godmother. Now, hop in, child. You have no time to waste. The magic only lasts till midnight. But my dress, fairy godmother, said Cinderella as she looked at her rags. Good heavens, child! laughed the fairy godmother. Of course you can't go in that. The wand waved again, and there stood Cinderella in the most beautiful gown in the world with tiny slippers of glass. The prince's ball had started. The palace was blazing with lights, and the ballroom gleamed with silks and jewels. And the prince smiled and bowed, but still looked bored as all the young ladies of the kingdom in turn curtsied before him. Above on a balcony stood the king and the duke looking on. Whatever is the matter with the prince? cried the king. He doesn't seem to care for one of those beautiful maidens. I feared as much, the great grand duke said with a sigh. The prince is not one to fall in love at first sight. 
but just then he did. For at that moment, Cinderella appeared at the doorway of the ballroom. The prince caught sight of her through the crowd, and like one in a dream, he walked to her side and offered her his arm. Quickly, the king beckoned to the musicians, and they struck up a dreamy waltz. The prince and Cinderella swirled off in a dance, and the king, chuckling over the success of his plan to find a bride for the prince, went happily off to bed. All evening, the prince never left Cinderella's side. They danced every dance, they ate supper together, and Cinderella had such a wonderful time. That she quite forgot the fairy godmother's warning, till the clock at the palace tower began to strike midnight. Bong, bong, the clock struck. Oh dear! cried Cinderella. She knew the magic was about to end. Without a word, she ran from the ballroom down the long palace hall and out the door. One of her little slippers flew off, but she could not stop. She leaped into her coach, and away they raced for home. But as they rounded the first corner, the clock finished its strokes. The spell was broken, and there in the street stood an old horse, a dog, and a ragged girl staring at a small round pumpkin. About then, some mice ran chattering. Glass slipper. The mice cried, and Cinderella looked down. Sure enough, there was a glass slipper on the pavement. Oh, thank you, Godmother," she said. Next morning, there was a great excitement in the palace. The king was furious when he found that the great grand duke had let the beautiful girl slip away. All we could find was this one glass slipper," the duke admitted. And now the prince says he must marry the girl whom the slipper fits, and he will not marry anyone else. He did," cried the king. "He said he said he would marry her. Well, then find her." All day and all night, the grand duke with his servant traveled about the kingdom, trying to find a foot on which the glass slipper would fit. In the morning, his coach drove up before Cinderella's house. The news of the search had spread. The stepmother was busy rousing her daughters and preparing them to greet the duke. She was determined that one of them should wear the slipper, and be the prince's bride. The prince's bride, whispered Cinderella. I must dress too. The duke must not find me like this. She went off to her room, humming a waltzing tune. Then the stepmother suspected the truth, that Cinderella was the girl that the prince was seeking. So the stepmother followed Cinderella to lock her in her room. The mice chattered a warning, but Cinderella did not hear them. She was off in a world of dreams. She then heard the key click. The door of her room was locked. "Please let me out! Oh, please!" she cried. But the wicked stepmother only laughed and laughed, and went away. We will save you," said the loyal mice. "We will somehow get the key." The household was in a flurry. The great grand duke had arrived, and his servant held the glass slipper in his hand. "It is mine!" both stepsisters cried, and each tried to force her foot into the tiny glass slipper. But the stepsisters failed. Meanwhile, the mice had made themselves into a long live chain. The mouse at the end dropped down into the stepmother's dress pocket. He popped up again with the key to Cinderella's room. At once, the mice hurried off with the key. Now the Grand Duke was at the door, about to leave. Suddenly, down the stairs, Cinderella came flying. Oh wait, wait, please! She cried. May I try on the slipper? Of course you may try," said the great grand duke, and he called back the servant with the slipper. But the wicked stepmother tripped the boy. 
a way sailed the slipper and crash. It splintered into a thousand pieces. Oh my! Oh my! Said the duke. What can I ever tell the king? Never mind," said Cinderella. "I have the other here," and she pulled from her pocket the other glass slipper. So off to the palace went Cinderella in the king's own coach, with the happy Grand Duke by her side. The prince was delighted to see her again, and so was his father, the king, for the sweet and beautiful girl won the hearts of all who met her. In no time at all, was she princess of the land, and she and her husband, the charming prince, rode to their palace in a golden coach to live happily ever after.